Hello and welcome to the beginning of spooky season! This is going to be the video where I spell out what my TBR is for the Hocus Pocus readathon. I said a couple months ago I wanted to start doing a readathon like every month and I was not able to do that for the last two months but here I am finally settled have all my books I'm getting a Texas ID so I can start going to the library soon and um yeah, so here I am, and there's this thing called the Hocus Pocus Readathon that I'm doing. It is from October 1st to October 13th, and it is one of the ones where there's teams, and you have to fulfill each prompt to get a certain number of points, and kind of like if you reach a certain number of points, you win. Um, as I don't really know if they're like actually tracking the points per team, but Either way, it's it looks like really cool. They put a lot of work into like the PDF, which I will link below. I'll link all the readathon information in the description box. But basically, the three teams are the Sanderson Sisters, the Undead, and the Trick or Treaters. Um, I originally signed up to be part of the Sanderson Sisters team because obviously, why not? They're the coolest characters in the movie. But then I was putting together my TBR, and I was literally so uninspired by the prompts. Like I just didn't know what to do with them. So I was looking at the rest of the, like, the other teams, and I realized that, like, just, like, glancing at the trick-or-treaters prompts, like, I already knew what I wanted to do. So I decided to change my alliances, and now I'm on team trick-or-treaters. For each team, there are five unique prompts, and then there is the group book, which is, like, the sixth book, and then the seventh Thing you need to do is just watch Hocus Pocus and I am going to go down my list of prompts for the trick-or-treaters and uh, talk through my TBR with you. The first challenge for the team trick-or-treaters is to read a spine-tingling book and for that I'm gonna be reading Flesh Eaters by Joe McKinney. This is very clearly a zombie book. It's as far as I can tell literally just like the zombie apocalypse starts, Houston is quarantined, story starts from there like it doesn't look that much more complicated um and i'm excited for it i don't know how spine tingling it's gonna be but you know zombies are kind of scary i'm into that let's go challenge number two is to read a book by flashlight like at night and for that i'm going to do and then there were none by agatha christie um this is a book that i've actually read before i read it in eighth grade and it is one of the like Best Isolated Closed Circle Mysteries, um, which is a, a mystery where the cast of characters is isolated in a certain place and people start dying and like nobody leaves and nobody comes into the isolated place. So it's like there's a limited number of people. It's isolated. And um, this is like a classic, classic, classic. There are, I don't know how many people, to, I, yeah, 10 people who are sent to this island and they all start dying and they're trying to figure out why were they selected to be invited to this island. Um, it's really good. I don't remember exactly who it was so I'm gonna be surprised and I'm really excited to read this at night because it's gonna be like scary and spooky and um, this kind of sounds like <laughs> kind of janky but I have a I have a fan with light bulbs with like lights on it but there's no like pull string for the lights so I can't turn them on so I like don't have light in my bedroom after the sun goes down so I have actually um I read the like I read like a significant chunk of Skyward with the flashlight on my phone and I felt very like what am I doing but also you know you gotta do what you gotta do and that's what I'm gonna do with Agatha Christie the third prompt is to read a fantasy novel um, all of these have like really cool like explanations tied into the movie but I don't have the PDF with like all the explanations pulled up with me so when I say like read a fantasy novel like that doesn't really sound like a cool challenge but it has like a whole lead up I don't know anyway this is one where I'm actually not gonna set like a definite book for my TBR. I have a lot of fantasy novels just like out and about around my house 
and I feel like I'd rather keep that one open so I have like a mood reading choice. But here are three that I've been thinking of. The first one is River Keep by Martin Stewart. Basically, I believe this is about a boy whose father comes back from being drowned and he is just like, he seems like a different person, possibly possessed. Yeah, he's possessed. So the son um, has to go like up the river and you know face a sea monster and I just look looks really good so I'm excited for this and I don't know if I'm gonna read it but it's an option the second thing that I've been thinking of is reading Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman the TV series for this came out a few months ago and it looked really really good and I have a friend who I asked about it and she was like, oh, you have to read it. It's so good. You have to watch the show. So I actually started this a few months ago. I read like 10 pages and I wasn't really feeling it. So I put it down and I'm hoping that if I pick it up again, like during, during Halloween time, I'll enjoy it more because I definitely want to read it this year. So that's also an option. And then the third book is called The Crowns of Crosswald by D.E. Knight. So this is kind of a weird weird reason that I have this so when I first started my channel and I still was like on my other channel with my different name um I was messaged on Instagram by like the publisher which is like a small print publishing company and they were like do you want to get these and you can review them and I was like yeah so they sent me the first and second books in this basically fantasy middle grade series and I've just had it since like literally May and I just haven't touched them and I feel really bad because I got them and I read the descriptions and they actually sound like pretty interesting. They, I feel like they look like middle grade books but the main character, it says that she's 16. So I guess they're young adult, but I, I feel like they're marketed as middle grade. Anyway, The Crowns of Croswald is about Ivy Lovely, and she, I guess, was separated from magic for most of her life by, like, a border. And when she crosses this border, her powers awaken, and she starts going to a magic school. So, I mean, it just sounds kind of... It doesn't sound particularly inventive, like it's not reinventing the wheel, but it definitely sounds like it's taking a lot of like beloved fantasy tropes and just like doing something a little new with them. And I'm excited. So this is another one that I might pick up. It looks like it'll take less time. Actually, I don't know. There's still like, there's still like 300 pages. So I don't know. That's another option for the fantasy book prompt. The next challenge is to read a book with a squad. And for that, I'm really excited about this one. I'm going to be reading meddling kids by edgar cantero so i actually found out about this book a couple years ago when i was like really bored and was like what are some good halloween books and this one had just come out and i like bookmark i like tagged it on goodreads and here i am two years later like ooh, i should read that um i also really like the cover it's a really cool design but in real life the colors themselves are a little painful to the eye so I like the design but the colors not my fave anyway this is very clearly a scooby-doo reimagining I love the scooby-doo like mystery incorporated gang so this is basically an adult mystery novel um, and it's not like the actual, they all have different names. So it's about Andy, Nate, Carrie, Peter, and Tim the dog, who's a Weimaraner. Weimaraner? Anyway. Um, and as a, as a group of teenagers, they solved a mystery in their hometown. Um, and now it is 13 years later, and the former teen detectives are lost souls. So one of them has died one of them is on the run one of them's like addicted to drugs or something like that and it, they have to like go back to where they solved this mystery as teenagers and see what happened like what went wrong so I'm unspeakably excited I am really I have high hopes for this and I'm very 
I can't wait. So, meddling kids, Edgar Cantero. I love Scooby Doo. Let's go. I already said that once in this video, but I'm gonna say it again. Let's go. The next challenge is to read an audiobook or listen to an audiobook. And I actually have the physical book, but I'm going to listen to The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larson. So, I've read this before as well. Um, it's a pretty famous book, and it's about Lisbeth Salander. Yes, and Michael Blomquist. And he is a journalist who was accused of libel and went to prison. And she is kind of like a punk who's, you know, doesn't have any ties to anything. And um, they kind of come together to solve the mystery of this girl who disappeared like 40 years ago. Um, this is really good. I wanted to read this again because, where is it? I don't have it right here, but my friend actually gave me her copy that she had to read for school, and um, I it has the movie cover, so I was very grateful to have it, but when I saw this at Goodwill for 99 cents, I was like, I can just get the cover that I like better <laughs> for 99 cents. Um, you'll also notice it is a mass market paperback. I love mass market paperbacks, so I don't know, that doesn't bother me even though it's like real chunky. Anyway, I have this on audio. I believe the audiobook is 16 hours long. So, and if I listen to it on um, one and a half or double time, it shouldn't take me as long as all that. So, there's a dog eared page I found and had to fix that. So, that shouldn't be that bad. I'm going to be listening to that while I drive all over the place, and it'll be a good time. The last reading challenge is to read the group book, and that is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharin. Maharin? I don't know how to say her last name. This is a much-hyped new YA release. Um, it is a fantasy novel about a witch and a witch hunter who have to get married, and boy, I am excited. I love people from like opposite groups forced to come together falling in love against all odds like that is my jam so I'm really excited about that and I just I just think it's gonna be good I have really high hopes the author just announced the title of the sequel which is gonna be blood and honey and like what an aesthetic am I right like anyway I'm really excited for this I'm a little nervous because it's kind of long Okay, it's not that long. It's like the same number of pages as this one. You know, like, it's 500 pages. I can do it. That's another thing that I really like about this particular readathon, the Hocus Pocus readathon, is that it is 13 days long. I don't know why I was about to count that. Literally, it's 13 days long, which I think is reasonable to read six books. Like, I can't. I don't know if I can read seven books in seven days, which is like a lot of prompts or challenges for readathons. There, it'll be a week long readathon, and there's seven challenges, and like the extra thing is like read seven books in seven days, and like something about that just intimidates me a lot, you know, because I've done I've done that before, but not when there are like fun challenges that kind of limit your options. You know what I mean? Like, I could easily read seven romance novels that are the size of this in seven days, but when I'm, like, reading prompts, I want to, like, do fun stuff like this, you know? So, anyway, I'm really excited. Excited to watch the movie, excited to watch horror movies. I love horror movies, and I'm going to be doing that with all of my spare time at my new house, so... Um, I hope you enjoy this TBR, and if you've read any of these, let me know how you like them, how you think I'll like them, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!